Crap, my mic was muted. Okay, ready? Yeah, um... You want me to start You're right st now? Yep, start right. when you want. I'll, I'll hit the timer when I see it go. Yep. Alright, I'm gonna start now. I'm not running my own timer, so... This will be interesting. So this is Pokemon Yellow No Save Corruption. As with any kind of No Save Corruption category, as soon as you see those words, you should assume heavy RNG. So... This is the kind of category that it's fun to do and fun to show off, but not fun at all to grind. That said, this kind of category is really perfect for a marathon like this. And it shows off some a nice mix of glitches. We're going to start off by grabbing the PC potion, because it is possible to get really bad Pikachus and you're stuck with Pikachu for the early part of this run. And yep. I'm coming into basically an RNG rival fight. Which I can either win or lose. And whether I win or lose the basically changes how reliable the future fight fights will be. We don't have to grind for Nether in this run, thankfully, but we do have to grind for something else. And that is basically grinding to make sure we get Gengar, because Pikachu cannot beat Brock, as you might imagine, at least not in any kind of reasonable time. But yeah, okay, so here's the rival fight. Eevee is actually pretty strong. He'll live four hits from me normally. And... He can up to two hit you if he uses just a single tail whip. But normally he just three hits you. I would prefer to win this rival fight, but if I lose, I can adapt. And I won, so that's ideal. Now I'm gonna quickly look at my stats. Okay, I got really good stats on Pikachu. Which means that I'm not really forced into killing an extra encounter here. Basically, what I really want to see is 10 defense on my Pikachu. And at level 6 that's fairly unlikely, but I got a high defense Pikachu. So we should be okay. I will still kill a encounter that shows up if I can one hit it, but if I can't one hit the encounter then I won't bother. If I got a bad Pikachu then I would kill something even if it required two Thunder Shocks to kill it. And yes, the crit actually did matter. Because otherwise I wouldn't have four hit him and he would have probably killed me. But yeah, there was also a Pikachu percent glitchless race fairly recently. You have to beat the whole forest to have a realistic chance at beating Brock because you need to learn quick attacks to do any damage at all. Where since this is a glitch run, we're not going to be bothering with that kind of thing. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so Rock here's an encounter becomes... that I'm pretty much guaranteed to kill in one hit, so I'm going to go for it. It's 99% chance to one-shot us to one-shot a level 3 Pidgey with Thundershock. I've never actually in, um, it before. But in I'm yellow sure is a specific one. level required. Okay, so I don't actually have a level requirement, but if I kill one optional encounter then I can get level 7 for the Diglett fight. I have to survive a certain amount of turns against the Diglett, which is level 9, and Pikachu has really bad defense. By killing one additional encounter I get level 7 for the Diglett. I actually have good defense on my Pikachu, so I didn't necessarily need to, but because an encounter showed up that I was guaranteed to one-shot it was still worth doing, especially since it's a marathon run, and it'll get me a couple of extra hit points at least. We're not actually going to be using Pikachu to fight Brock. We're just going to be stalling against the Diglett for a few turns. The real glitchery of this run starts about 10 minutes in. In the meantime, we just have to deal with Encounter RNG. Now this is a Pokemon speedrun, so of course there's going to be Encounter RNG, but this category is particularly bad. Because in this game, Pokemon Yellow, Viridian Forest has an encounter rate which is basically the same as a regular route. Except on a regular route, you only go through like 10 patches of grass. In Viridian Forest, you have to go through like 80 patches of grass. Which means that when you go through Viridian Forest, Every time you expect to get like 6 or 7 encounters, and I have to go through Viridian Forest like 3 times. So I expect a lot of encounters in Viridian Forest, it's even worse than Mount Moon. And that's saying something because Mount Moon is Mount Moon. And everyone knows how notorious Mount Moon is in Gen 1 speedruns. <laughs> but yes, this is a lot worse than Mount Moon. It's about the same number of steps, but the encounter rate is two and a half times higher. Later on I'll be going to Mount Moon myself, and I'll probably only get about a maximum of ten encounters, and that would be a pretty bad Mount Moon. Whereas, in Viridian Forest I expect to get about fifteen to twenty, if things go badly. It's a good start not getting one in those three catches of the grass there, though. So some quick numbers to throw at you. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. Uh, Viridian Forest encounter rate in red and blue was 8 and 256. Uh, Pokemon Yellow, it's 25 and 256. Uh-huh. So it's increased by over three times. Plus, there isn't the fake encounter tiles where you can't get any Yeah, safe patches. Yeah, those are gone. And to put it into perspective, Mount Moon is a 10 and 25. 10 and 256, yeah. So, pretty similar to Red's, thank you. Red's uh, Mount Moon. Pretty similar to Mount Moon in general. Pretty similar to Red's Red Forest in general, sorry. Tell you what, when you're on a... Uh, when you're on a world record pace run, it feels like it's 10 and 25. <laughs> Since I am pretty high level, uh, I think I should probably save for Kitty anyway, because he can just crit you out of the blue. I do outspeed. I do get the jingle skip on the potion at least, because I got an encounter right in front of it. Yellow was uh, the first. It was like the first GBC game, or was it after uh, GS? Well. No, this was the first game that had, like, GVC support for real. And then Crystal was the first game that forced you to go on GVC. Apart from the spin-offs. Yellow does have Wild Pidgeotto, and if I run into one, then that is extremely bad. I have something like four potions, but an untimely crit will still kill me here. If I'm lucky, then I five-shot this Caterpie, but I think I got a bad range at some point. 
so I might not get the fight it. Okay, I got it. Cool. And the, you can see I'm level 7. If, if I don't kill an encounter before I kill the Scatopy, I'm short of level 7 by 9 experience. And that's, like, pretty unoptimal. And yeah, Gold Azo is correct. The Japanese version of Pokemon Yellow didn't have Game Boy Color support for whatever reason. They just added it for the English version and the European versions. Not entirely sure why, but it's true. So... It might seem a bit stupid that I'm taking the centre considering I still have plenty of PP and I have like 4 potions, but I need to set my warp point here because of the trainer fly glitch, which is probably the most well-known Gen 1 Pokemon glitch, except a lot of people will notice a new glitch. In this run we don't use it to get a Mew, we use it to get a Gengar, because Mew isn't really feasible to get in early game. So I need to buy three total items here, and I, two of those need to be escape ropes, and I need a lot of Pokeballs. I need to buy two escape ropes, a ton of Pokeballs, and then one of our items, so the item I choose is the antidote because it's the cheapest. So now I've got Pokeballs so I can catch my Trainer Fly Pokemon, I've got escape ropes so I can set up my Trainer Fly. So now I can return to the forest and actually set it up. If you want to set up a trainer fly in the forest in Pokemon Blue, you have to do a death fly, which is basically where you reset until you get an encounter in front of a trainer's line of sight and dice that encounter, and that has the same effect as setting up a trainer fly. But Pokemon Yellow added a trainer where you can do the normal kind of trainer fly, where you step into a step into the line of sight where of a trainer who has maximum range vision while they're off screen, and then before they actually get loaded onto the screen you can use your escape rope to go away. Can't really do much about the mic quality sadly, if it's bad then it's bad. And yeah, we can't damage Nido King, that's why we don't use him. Then the split trap. So I have to save here for a few reasons. The main reason is that the upcoming fight is actually really difficult, and it's another chase where even if I'm at high health, an uh, untimely crit can just kill me. The other reason is that I have a 10% chance every time I set up, try to set up that train fly of just getting an encounter, and if I get an encounter when I try to train a fly, it just doesn't work for various reasons. So this is the Diglett fight I was talking about. I have to get this Diglett to minus six attack. I have to use six growls on it. Yeah, I was about to ask why you do that. Because basically this game, when you're doing the trainer fly glitch, the level of the thing you catch is based off the attack stage of the Pokemon you last fought. So... This attack stage, obviously, like... You can go from minus 6 to plus 6. And... So the game represents that by using the numbers 1 to 13. Except... Neutral isn't 1, it's 7. So that if you lower his... If you lower his attack once, it goes from 7 to 6 and so forth, and 1 is minus 6 attack. Whereas if you start raising your attack, which won't happen in this run, then it goes up. So I actually got crit quite a lot by this Diglett here. Whenever he criticals me, it ignores my attack drops. And he has quite close to a 20% crit rate, but luckily, I, with the help of my excessive potion supply, I was able to get off 6 growls at him before I died, which means that I changed the up level of the upcoming Trainer Fly Glitch Pokemon from level 7 to level 1. And getting a level 1 Pokemon is important. 
Also, talking to that center sign makes you pick up a Pokeball here because of a weird correspondence and how events in this game work. So, because level 1, because Gengar has such a high base special value, he can survive a Thunder Shock from my level 7 Pikachu even though he's only level 1. And that increases his catch rate by about 3 times. The flip side to that is that I have about a 20% crit rate, and if I critical him, he's guaranteed to die. And even though I've weakened him, he's still only a 20% catch rate. That's another reason why I had to save. Because if I don't catch this thing in all of my 11 balls, I have to go all the way back and try this again. And so far we're not getting lucky. And I still have a fair few balls left. This is the only real reason that this category is at all dodgy in its estimate. Once you get past this part, there is more RNG, but it will not lose you to run, whereas catching Gengar can obviously lose you to run because it's such a low chance per ball. And I'm, yeah, I'm getting trolled here. It doesn't matter if I catch him in my last ball, I just need to get him. Well, it's gonna be the last ball or nothing. Wow, the troll is real. Word. 11 balls, no Gengar. And that is why this category is RNG to the max. You should theoretically have two in a bit Gengars by now, but no. Yeah, that's just RNG. Like, I have about a 90% chance to catch him every single time overall. But yeah, I have to come all the way back here. If I save at any point after I do this escape rope glitch away, it doesn't work. The glitch won't work. Like, the Gengar won't show up. So I just lost about 3 or 4 minutes because he did not get into 11 balls. So we get to fight Diglett again. Hopefully he doesn't crit as much this time. Iron Jesus was not kind. Yeah, 90% is about right. Every time I throw 11 balls at Kinga, I have about a 90% chance to catch him. I have a 20% chance to crit him and then that's an instant reset. But, really, it's just, hope he gets in the ball. I have such high defense that I can play it a little safe, like, normally you can't really justify going, taking a hit at 12 health because he will crit for more than 12 damage, but because I have such high defense Pikachu, I could pretty much safely just go for that. Unfortunately, now we get to the flip side of this fight. If you don't get critical, well, never mind, I got critical. But if I hadn't been critical there, he only does 2 damage a turn. And as you can see, if I had like 15 health left and he was doing 2 per turn, that would take a long time to kill me. And he does actually need to kill me eventually. Thundershock can also paralyze, yes, and that increases my chance of catching by a little bit, but also makes it so that I have to take Pokemon Center because I don't have a Paralyze Heal, and I can't afford a Paralyze Heal. But yeah, I guess Thundershot Paralyze would be the ideal situation for a Marathon. It's just that having to take the Center is slow. So... Okay, Let's so see I this didn't one get in. Out this time either. So we get another 11 balls. It doesn't matter what health works. he's at. As long as he's in the orange, he has the same catch rate no matter what, because of this game's catch formula basically just rounds a lot. Whereas in later games you want to weaken Pokemon as low as they can go. But in this Nightshade game, is the orange. Nightshade is this game, well, it's the ghost equivalent of Seismic Toss, isn't it? Yes. So that's a level 1 Pokemon, so that's doing 1 damage. So it has zero chance of killing you in train. Oh, it's got Lick as well, never mind. <laughs> Lick does two. 
but it can only ever do two even if it criticals, so he has 0% chance of killing me, unless he licks every single turn for 11 turns in a row, including the turn that I weaken him. But this is just getting absolutely ridiculous. Like, this is going on 20 balls now. Okay, we got a Gengar. We can finish the run. This still won't be too bad. Oh, so we got in. Thank God. Yeah. There we go, yeah. Thank God. Oh, the ball goes purple and yellow. Didn't know that. And he's not paralyzed either, nor is Pikachu, so that makes the forest a bit easier. So now here comes another fairly familiar glitch if you've done any kind of Pokemon Gen 1 glitching. This one's called Experience Underflow. If I take my level 1 Gengar and I give him a small amount of experience, instead of going up to level 2, the game thinks... The game does not process level 1 Pokemon properly. Instead of having a really small amount of experience, they actually have negative experience, and then when you level them up, that negative experience gets treated as a really big positive number, and so my Gengar's experience just caps out, and I suddenly have a level 100 Gengar. And do 100 damage with Nightshade. Yeah. I also do a decent amount of damage with Lick. Like, Gengar is not a physical attacker, so you'd think that Lick wouldn't do too much damage, but because I'm level 100 and I'm fighting things which are either single digit levels or in their teens at most, Lick will still kill everything that I can use it on. But Lick happens to be a ghost type move and there are a lot of normal Pokemon that I have to fight, which is where Nightshade comes in. Nightshade is also a ghost type move, so you might think that I'm screwed, but in Gen 1, moves that do like fixed damage, like the likes of Nightshade and Psychic Toss, ignore your... ignore type immunities. This isn't what happens in Gen 2 onwards. And the reason I had to save there is the same reason. I have a 10% chance getting an encounter when I step towards this guy. And if I do get that encounter, then the run is basically over. I would have to go all the way back to my save for the first trainer fly, and obviously that's a really bad thing. Because I'm really sure that you guys want to see me catch a Gengar again or fail to catch a Gengar again, as the case may be. But yeah, I have to do another Trainer Fly because I want to catch another Pokemon using that glitch later in the run. But before I can actually get that Pokemon, I have to progress through some of the plot. But I'm gonna beat up on that Diglett that roughhoused me earlier. You might think that I should just go and fight Brock now, like, why am I killing this guy? Well, after you do a trainer fly, you have to fight a trainer from a long distance to reactivate your controls. If I tried to walk up straight to Brock and talk to him, it would just do nothing. He would just stand there and ignore my talking. So in order to be able to fight Brock and continue the story, I have to fight that junior trainer to make Brock actually listen to me. The, the yellow glitchless runners still have to grind for level 6 Nidorans, and that is coming up later in the marathon. Decon Stream will be doing a run of yellow glitchless early on the last day. You shall talk Decon as he trolls you. Uh-huh. That may or may not have been deliberate. Can you give me a read on what? the timer? It should be like 22 minutes or something, or 23? Like, we're fine, but I just want to see what it is. Uh, Onyx fainted at 23 minutes and 52 seconds. Okay, so yeah, high, high end of what I thought, but still completely fine. The run is about 15 minutes more from here, roughly, or... no, a bit less. Probably more like... It's about 5 minutes from when I leave Mount Moon. Mount Moon takes about 5 minutes, so yeah. Yeah, it's about another 14-15 minutes. Ooh, it's getting close to the estimate. <laughs> yeah. There's not much you can do to cover Gengar massive trolling with an estimate for this category, unfortunately. 
the way I see it though, the odds of not getting Gengar are the same odds of Mudshot missing. So <laughs> Mudshot misses a lot. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Mudshot. Tackle. Those ever reliable moves. The best part ever is where you miss two consecutive mud shots. Yeah, that's just a casual one because in 400 chance. Happens on, you know, PV base. It just happens sometimes. You can't help it. Yeah. This isn't... Okay, so... If, you're, if you've watched blue glitch runs before, like the SGDQ run, you might be wondering why I didn't walk through walls like shenanigans did. The pretty simple answer is that they got patched in yellow, unfortunately. Well, more to the point, Brock skip got patched. If I could skip Brock, I could still walk through walls, but I can't skip Brock at all, so sadly there is no walk through walls. Do you think they patched it by, by accident or something? Because I doubt they have glitch hunters on the, like, the Game Freak team, so... Do you think it was just kind of accidentally patched or purposely patched? No, I think they deliberately patched, like, Brock Skip. Like, they didn't do anything about about the Walk Through Walls glitch at all. They just patched Brock Skip. It may have been due to engine differences, but I think they deliberately did something about it. Wow, so people found glitches really soon after the Red and Blue came out. Yeah. Or was it able to do it in the Japanese version as well? Yeah, like, this is completely universal. Ah, because the uh, Docomo, oh, I can't say the word, you know the door glitch in green, that the was... Door, yeah. Yes, that word door. <laughs> that that was patched in the... Yeah. So, it was glitch hunters even back in the late 1990s. So, lucky time Typhlosion ancestors right there. Yeah, well, it's pretty bad. Not sure ancestors is the word. Also, what I did was just resetting the route there to move that trainer back to her original position, so that I could skip the bug catch versus four Pokemon. Even though I one shot four Pokemon, it still takes quite a long time to see them come in and then die. Pokemon Green Gen One will be run probably later in the marathon, unless we have schedule issues. We have had some schedule issues already, obviously, but those will be mostly fixed by some later runs which have really high estimates. Okay, evaded the route for encounters. Pure skill. There is roughly a 20% chance I get an encounter during those five tiles of grass. It doesn't seem very significant when you consider that I'm about to enter Mount Moon, but it's still annoying. The Pokemon Green one won't be one minute long, but it will be about five minutes long. If you've ever seen Doku Kushira Doll before, you know that it's over pretty quickly. And if you haven't, then it's a fun run to watch, so I definitely suggest you tune in for that. It'll most likely be where it says set up filler on the schedule. Also, here come the Zubats. I'm actually taking a path straight through Mount Moon, where I don't have to pick up any items or fight any optional trainers. So, in theory, I should get as few po as few encounters as it's possible to get, on average. But, this is Mount Moon, and Mount Moon does not like it when you talk about averages. And yeah, encounters cost me world record right here. You can clearly see that if I had had a zero encounter Mount Moon, I would have acquired world record in this run. It totally didn't have a trolley Gengar or anything. This run is the definition of perfection. Alternatively, it might just be the definition of Zubat, Zubat, Zubat. And yes, Horro and Decon in the, street, in the chat have it right. Encounters cost me world record.
So that's when you actually get world record, and you say that encounters cost you, encounters cost you world record. Yeah. Encounters often cost me world record. On a daily basis, I leave world record to encounters. And to crits, and to my chop misses, and to everything else with those big ones. Basically, every run I've ever had was on world, world record pace. <laughs> it's just... RNG gets me, don't they? <laughs> every run is on world record pace until you enter the first input. I I'm quite often at a um, world record pace at rival one. Oh, so, you know. Yeah. Sometimes even world record pace at gym one, but. I got a game level 100 using glitches, basically. It's hard to explain it all again to a people that are just. Uh, no, he he uses a lot of grinding. He uses a load of grinding, right? It took him ages, got experience, shares out, you know. A lot of time. Killed a few bussies. All the things are in the game. Okay, coming up is a very small change in what I've been doing for the last 10 minutes. Instead of just mindlessly beating trainers, I'm actually going to let one of them kill me. Well, not my Gengar. That will be a little difficult. But I need my Pikachu to be dead for an upcoming glitch. It's not far it's not necessarily faster to talk to the super nerd, but it gets you more it gets you more tiles where you can't get an encounter. So that does make it faster on average. Just not for a test. I don't know if it would be faster for a test or not. It would be slower for a task because of turn frames. Not entirely sure about that, but yeah maybe. <laughs> okay, so it would be two frames slower. Yeah, this thing needs to die. And luckily to me I've used an attacking move. So... I need to have my Pikachu dead before I beat Misty. And... There are basically two realistic options to kill my Pikachu on. One is that Meowth and the other one is Misty's Starmie. But Misty's Starmie can do five things and only three of them are guaranteed... And only three of them will kill me. Whereas Meowth can do three things and two of them will kill me. So the chances of dying are higher for that Meowth than Meowth Stami. There are things in the game that only have attacking moves, but they don't do enough damage in one hit to kill Pikachu. Now we're out of Mount Moon. So the next step, since we have a level 100, we may as well just go and beat Mystery, right? There's no sense delaying it. We'll just go beat her up, no problem. Guys, we have to beat Misty. Yeah, that's pretty much what I was getting at. Why are people paying respects to Pikachu? Pikachu is utterly useless. <laughs> like, worse stutter. Although it would probably be bad, be worse if you started with a bolt of sword, to be fair. I can only imagine. Well, for a casual player it will be fine. Just grind up and I actually really weapons. like Goldine's sprite in a uh, gold Goldine sprite in yellow is much better than the red blue sprite. Red blue sprite looks obnoxious and makes me like upset when Thrash doesn't one hit it. It never one hits it unless you crit. It one hits it if you over level. Oh yeah, it can at like level 25 or 26, but not 24. Screw Pikachu. It is better than the Gen 1 base than the other Gen 1 starters when it's not evolved, but the problem is the whole evolving part. Alright, so I'm going to warn you now, in about a minute to a minute and a half, there is going to be 
really annoying audio coming through your coming through the stream. So you That's fantastic because I got it muted. If you have sensitive <laughs> ears or really any kind of ears, you might want to mute the stream when the upcoming glitch happens. It'll be very obvious because the stream will the screen will turn black for about fifteen seconds or ten seconds. So I deposit I deposit my Gengar so that I die and go back to Viridian. And go back to Pewter rather. Now I'm back to where I set up that glitch earlier, so I can use my glitch. This isn't especially loud, but it is super, super annoying. So brace yourselves, mute now if you have any problems with screeching noises. Or ringing noises, right? This is what I like. This is what I like to call rip headphones percent. Yes. Here is missing though in yellow. It is quite the sight. So what I'm doing here is missing though, as you might know, as you probably know already, duplicates your items, but I need to duplicate my items twice. So what I'm doing is using two potions in battle so that my quantity of potions goes down from 129 to 127. And when I do that, I can then duplicate my items again by catching him, and that makes my items go from 127 to 255, which is the quantity I need to finish the run. So now that I have a stack of 255 items, when I should only be able to have a stack of 99, I can do things that I shouldn't be able to do with my inventory. Specifically, you'll see that when I throw away my potions, they don't actually go away. And if I do this multiple times, and then start combining the stacks of glitch items, strange things happen. Namely, my inventory explodes from having six items to having about 250 items. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Oh yeah, I just didn't use the right rival name, I'll just have to do this. Are we getting close to time then? Yeah, pretty close. I just screwed up very slightly. So now I have a now I have access to the game's memory, which means basically I can change things like where a door's like if I walk through a door I can change where that door actually takes me to by tossing by tossing some items. And if I toss just a certain amount of those TMs and walk through the door then wow. I suddenly appear in the Hall of Fame. Item on the floor never ceases to amaze me. Yeah, like this will be un this will be explained in more detail in the blue one five one run. In this run, it happens so fast that it's kind of hard to explain it all. So definitely check out the blue one five one Pokemon run later in the marathon. Also, time is when the screen fades to white here after the Pokedex message. Yeah. Okay. Thirty-eight twenty-five point right. four eight. Not bad with the troll Gengar. Yeah, the Gengar cost a lot of time, and the encounter luck was average apart from that. But the Gengar, the Gengar like twenty balls cost way too much time. I pretty much knew that if I didn't get first strike Gengar, this estimate was going to be pushing it. But I think it's probably all right. And yeah, that's Pokemon Yellow in under 40 minutes without using save corruption. If you use save corruption, you can do a pretty similar thing in about a minute. But this way you at least get to see some regular gameplay and some other glitches apart from just basically menus, menus, menus. So yeah, it's, now it's 
time for Coliseum with Worcester again. I mean, not Coliseum, Stadium Blindfold with Worcester. Okay then. Now I've got that sorted, so we quickly move on to the stadium. Yep. See you later. I'm gonna head out.